Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Wicksall and I'm here to talk about three more biographies that I recently read and I really liked them and I think you will too. So I'm going to start off with who was Booker T. Washington. Um, today I'm actually going to talk about all, um, like three of the biographies I'm going to talk about are all this series where it's the who was series and everybody that they feature has like a giant head. Sometimes I call it the giant head series. <laughs> and it's a really good series. It's kind of funny because they make their head so big and the body so tiny. Um, but they're really good books and you learn a lot about the people. So you really do who learn or find out who was whoever the book's about. So um, who was Booker T. Washington? Have you ever heard of him? Um, Booker T. was born a slave, but guess what? He was freed under Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. And he, he once he got freed, he briefly worked in a coal mine and he realized that this was really hard, dirty, ridiculously hot, dangerous work. And he just did not want to, he did not see himself doing this work for his whole life. He had no desire to, to end up doing that his whole life. What he really dreamed of was getting an education. So he became a servant and um, Booker T was quite smart. And the people that he worked for, he worked for a couple of different ladies, both recognized right away that he was bright. And he ended up, he did what they asked. He did different chores for them. And, and, and um, when, when there was time that, you know, he'd done what he, he needed to do, th these ladies would help him. One helped him to be able to speak better English. Um, another one was a teacher and um, she would use some of the lessons she used with her students. She would use with Booker T if there was time and um, she always remarked that no matter how much work he'd done in the day and no matter how much um, it might have been a nice day and there were other young people outside playing or whatever if she said would you like to do a lesson he he right away yes he really wanted to learn so he did learn a lot from these ladies and he saved up the money he earned by being a servant. And this is fast. This is amazing. Guess what he did? He walked not one, not two, not even a hundred. He walked 500 miles to go to school and he paid for his own schooling, but he walked 500 miles by himself to get himself to school. Um, it was a boarding school and it was a very good school and it gave him a lot of opportunities because it turned out he did really well in school he loved school and because he went to school and he went to school to be a teacher because he he loved learning so much and he wanted to be able to teach other people all these wonderful things he was learning about um one thing led to another he had various teaching positions. He was an excellent teacher and he was asked to run a school that was set up in Alabama um, called the Tuskegee, Tus Tuskegee Normal School. And a normal school, um, back in the day, they had schools called normal schools and they typically were schools like colleges that were there to train people how to be teachers. So he had learned how to be a teacher he had taught and now he was asked to run a school and to teach at a school that would be a school to teach other people how to teach. But it was specifically a school for black people, both men and women could go there to learn how to become teachers. And it was an excellent school and many people went there and through the years, the school grew and grew and today there is because Tus Tuskegee University and it's a school for black people and other minorities and it's one of the best um, private black 
it's one of the best private schools for black people and minorities. It's like ranked third or fourth in the nation. Um, it's an excellent school. It's turned out thousands of professionals in fields like education. They still make excellent teachers there. Um, they, they help to train scientists and engineers and those who want to take leadership roles in the military. So because of Booker T. Washington, um, black people have an excellent university they can go to today. And at the time, he really opened doors for many, many black people in this country who without education uh, would not have been able to get very far, but because they could go to this university, they could learn to be teachers. And as the university um, grew throughout the years, they could learn how to do other things. Um, it's just an amazing accomplishment. And he is an amazing person because how many of you would walk 500 miles to get to school? Think about it. That's, that's a lot of dedication. The next big head book is Sacagawea. I bet you you've heard of Sacagawea. Um, Sacagawea or bird woman, because in her Indian language, her name literally means bird woman. She was a Shoshone Indian and she was born the, the very last decade, the last 10 years roughly of the 1700s. And she was born in the area that we would now call Idaho. And her, her Indian tribe was attacked by another tribe when she was about 10 years old. And when that happened, she was captured by the other tribe. And she was taken far away from her um, home in Idaho to a place in North Dakota. And she felt very sad there. She was like a, a prisoner among strangers. Um, it, was, it, was not, it was not a happy time. And the name of the tribe that she had been taken by was the Minnetree Indian, Indian tribe. Well, at around 15 years old, so she had about five years of living with this tribe, but not really being a member, being more like a prisoner, um, a fur trader came, came along and his name was Charbonneau. And Charbonneau, um, knew how to communicate with the native people and he really, when he saw Sacagawea, she caught his eye. So he ended up, he became her husband and uh, not long after that, she became pregnant and um, she was going to have a baby. So at all, around all of this time, the president of the United States was Thomas Jefferson. And Jefferson really wanted um, some explorers to go out west and try to figure out what is out west because he knew that we were gonna wanna expand our nation and he knew there were a lot of other countries that would have liked to have been able to claim different territories that are now our states. And he kind of, he, he had the vision to know that, you know, we need to get out there and, and see what's out there, first of all, and then document it and say, hey, we've already been there and this is part of our country now. So he asked Lewis and Clark to go on an expedition to do just that. Well, when Lewis Clark got to North Dakota, they met up with Charbonneau and the Minnetree Indian tribe. And this is when um, Sacagawea and Charbonneau got together. And this is when Lewis and Clark actually had a proposition for both Charbonneau and Sacagawea to come along on the expedition because they realized that both Charbonneau and Sacagawea 
would he would be able to communicate with some of the different Indian tribes that they would come in contact with. And Charbonneau also would have been able to talk to other French traders that they might have met along the way. So Charbonneau, realizing that the amount of money they offered was a great deal, it was like $500. Well, in that time, saying, um, if you come with us, I'll give you $500 would be like somebody saying, come do this with me and then you'll get a million dollars. It was a lot of money. So Charbonneau and, and Sacagawea decided to go on this expedition. And if you read the book, you'll find out about all sorts of different things that happen, um, how brave Sacagawea was and helpful, and also how fortunate it actually ended up being that she went on this journey because this expedition actually um, led her back to her family, which was um, a very happy part of the story. So I hi highly recommend that you check out the Big Head book called Who is Sacagawea? Because Sacagawea was quite an interesting woman. And by the way, on her expedition, her baby, his name is Jean Baptiste. Jean Baptiste traveled all those miles on his mom's back. So pretty remarkable stuff. And finally, my last um, big head book that I'm gonna talk about is called Who is Annie Oakley? And if you are interested in hunting um, or shooting, this woman was pretty interesting because um, when she was a young girl, not even five years old, her dad used to like to take her with him um, on his hunting expeditions, hunting and trapping and all that sort of thing. She wasn't even five, she wasn't even in kindergarten and he was doing this. And she was a bright little girl and she was really watching all the things that her dad was doing to catch animals and hunt them. So sadly, when she was around five, at about kindergarten age, her dad passed away. And she came from a family with six kids and her mom, and now the dad had passed, but still had seven people who needed to be able to eat. And she was the oldest one and somebody needed to do something so that they wouldn't starve to death. And so, she took it upon herself to go out into the forest around her house and she would she would remember the things that her dad had done and she trapped different animals um, birds and squirrels and all sorts of things and then she um some time went by and she she kept looking above the fireplace and she saw her dad's rifle hanging above the fireplace and she kept thinking you know that I bet I could shoot that rifle and I could get us bigger game so we'd have more food to eat. Well, her mom forbade her because one day she was actually standing on a stool trying to get to this rifle. And her mom was like, no, I don't want to see you up there again. You can't do it. And she listened for a bit, but then she decided, no, nope, her family is starving. She has to do something and she's pretty sure she knows how to how to shoot a gun. So she, when her mom's not around, she gets the gun and she goes out into the woods and lo and behold, even though she she's not a big she's not a big girl. She's very tiny actually. And when you shoot a a rifle, um there's kickback and it's not an easy thing to do even if you're a big man. But she remembered enough from whatever she saw her father do that she managed to shoot a squirrel. And then from there, things, she just kept practicing and she, she got so good with this rifle that by the time she was 10, she could shoot just about anything that came along and they, they would be able to have decent meals to eat. So she, she ended up be becoming a really good hunter and a really good markswoman. 
So after a while, um, she ended up leaving home. And um, this was mostly because, to make a long story short, um, her family had a lot of financial problems. And even though she could shoot things that they would be able to eat, um, they really needed more money. So she went and did some other work for people who swore to the mom that they would treat her well and everything, but they did not. But fortunately, um, she started entering turkey shoot contests. And um, you could win quite a bit of money if you were the winner of a turkey shoot. So she would do these contests and she started, she started winning all of them to the point that at a certain point they said, you know what, we're not letting you enter because you're just going to win. You always win. <laughs> um, but until it got to that point, she earned quite a bit of money and she'd send most of that money back home so her mother could take care of her siblings. And, um, and then after that, she also realized that there were a lot of restaurants serving game and that um, a lot of times the hunters would use buckshot, which would mean that if you were sitting down to eat, um, I don't know, a duck, a dinner of uh, roasted duck, when you cut into your duck, there'd be all these little pieces of shrapnel in it. And she used a rifle and didn't use um, buckshot that scattered little bits all inside the animal. So she decided to offer them a uh, game she had shot. And she said, you know, it'll be better because if you let me bring you your, your whatever game you want, you won't have to dig out all this shrapnel and, and your customers are going to like it better. Well, she was right. And she ended up making lots of money by supplying restaurants with all sorts of different um, animals that they could serve to the customers. And while she was doing that, there was a man that took note of all these animals that this woman is going out into the woods and shooting and supplying restaurants with. And she, he just can't believe that even though, you know, she's grown up by now, she's this tiny little woman and that she's actually doing this like he just can't believe it and so he sets up this challenge he says you know what if you're for real how about you take you take on this challenge it, i'm gonna pit you against another man who knows how to shoot a shoot a gun and we're gonna see who's the best shot and if you win you'll get a hundred dollars which that's quite a bit of money in this time. So of course, um, Annie says, okay, what time, what, what, what date? And when the date and the time arrive, she goes, and what she doesn't know is that this man has set up a challenge that he thinks there's no way she's going to be able to, to win. And he's going to make a fool of her because he has a professional marksman um a sharpshooter nonetheless um as the one that she's trying to beat so they shoot all sorts of things up into the air and they have to and annie and this other man they have to shoot the things you like they might throw a plate up into the air and both of them have to be able to shoot it well lo and behold the the sharpshooter the the marksman she's trying to beat he misses something and guess what when it's her turn, she's so nervous, her knees are shaking, but she shoots and she, she hits whatever the target is and she wins the contest. It's amazing, everybody can't believe it. And this is where she meets her lo the love of her life. And from this point on, as exciting as what I've just told you is, it gets even more exciting because Annie Oakley has a life like no one else has ever had or ever will have. Um, she has quite an adventurous life filled with all these different opportunities where she 
gets to show off her shooting skills and travel the world, meet royalty. And if you want to know why she gets to do all these things and how that all happened, you got to read Who Was Annie Oakley? Because, again, this is another fascinating person that um, I think if you read about her, you'll be, you'll be really amazed, because I was. So until next month, I hope you check out some of these books and have a fun time learning about other people. And uh, I hope you find it inspirational because are you noticing what I'm noticing? That people who are curious and pay attention and um, persevere in life manage to do some pretty exciting things with their lives. Are you noticing that? Because I sure am, especially curiosity. So until next time, bye.